You have a heart that's deceived above all things and desperately wicked. He inquired into their lives. What you were, he inquired and then dealt with what you have. And he inquired and says, let me tell you this. Don't you know what God did? Here's what he says. He says, but he said, some of you, but you are washed. You are sanctified. And you are justified in the name of Jesus and by the Spirit of God. He tells them three things about what God did. He said, don't you know this? Don't you remember this? Don't you think about this? Don't you think about what you were before? Don't you think about what you have now in the kingdom? And don't you think about what God did for you? The unrighteous don't have this. He said he sanitized you. That's a good 2020 word. Sanitized. Everything had to be sanitized. We do work at, uh, at Enterprise, and I say we didn't sanitize cars. And they say, what? I said, yeah. We, I said, we're just insane about this thing. We get in there, and every little spot, we're sitting there wiping sanitation spray over to make sure that you don't get your COVID-19 in 2020 and or in 21. But we did, we, uh, but sanitize. He said, this is what he says. He said, you're washed. You've been sanitized. Hey, you're purged from your old sins. They've been taken as far as the east is from the west so far to remove our transgressions from us. I mean, uh, you have been sanitized. Yes. The lost world has it. The unrighteous have it. Right. But not only have you been sanitized, but you've been set apart or sanctified. Sanctified. He didn't just sanitize you, but he set you apart to be his own. I am my beloved, and my beloved is mine. I am his, he's mine. I am, and he said, don't you know that? The unrighteous don't have that. And don't you know he gave you a standing? Here's what he says. He says you're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have access into this grace where we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. I am talking about we have a standing. We have been sanitized. We have been sanctified. And we have a standing. And the unrighteous don't have that. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. He's reminding them as he deals with their, their attitudes and dealing with their appetites. He says, don't you remember where you came from? Don't you remember what you have. And don't you remember what God did to take you from where you came from to give you what you have and the unrighteous don't have that. It ought to get our attitude better. And if our attitude gets right, our appetites will be right. So God inquires of their, into their life. But then God accuses their logic. This is all before we get to chapter verse number 20, 19 and 20. He imputes their logic. Carnality says, all things are lawful unto me. And God says, that's not even proper logic. You're thinking about what's lawful. All things are not beneficial, are not expedient. He said, your logic's warped because you're looking at what can I do? What can I get away with? It's lawful. Who's telling me? I'm saved. I've been sanitized. I've been sanctified and I have a standing. So carnality says, so it really doesn't matter what I do. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Carnality says all things are lawful unto me. All things are lawful for me. But proper logic says, is it really worth it? 
Is it worth it? Is it beneficial? Does it bring bondage? And sin will keep you longer than you want to stay. It'll take you farther than you want to stray. And it'll cost you more than you want to pay. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. The deceitfulness of sin. You're hard-hearted by the deceitfulness of sin. God accuses their logic. Carnality says, what's wrong with it? Proper logic asks, what's right with it? Carnality says, it's my body. Meat for the belly. The belly for meat. That same logic says, it's my body. What's it really matter if I'm involved in fornication? What's it really matter to my body? It's just a body. My spirit's not involved in fornication. That's the logic of carnality. What's it matter what I watch? What's it matter what I wear? It's my body. It's just the body. This is the natural world. Spiritually, I'm okay, but in a, in a natural world, I'm just living like they live. I've got to fit in with this world I'm living in. That's the carnal mindset. Proper logic says God sanitized you, God sanctified you, God sets, He has a standing for you. Why do we even want to be? Matter of fact, he makes the statement, now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord. Now he's not dealing with the moral issue here. He's dealing with the mental issue here. The carnal mind says it's just the body. And God says it's just the body that I've heard. It's just the body. I sanitized your, in, your, your spirit, your soul, and now your body. I am wanting to do a work using that body. Carnality says, what's the big deal? And God says, don't you know? Don't you know? Here's what he says. I, and, and, and I told you that he says this so many times. Know you not that your bodies are members of Christ? No, you not. Don't you even know that? Do you not know that you've been joined together with Christ? Can you take the members of Christ and make them part of the harlot? That doesn't even make sense. Wherever you go, whatever you want, whatever you do, you're bringing Christ into it. He impugns their logic by saying, logically, if you really believe what the Bible says, that you're twined, intertwined with Christ, and if any man have not the Spirit of God, it's none of His, and that God lives inside of you, Christ lives inside of you, what would you be doing living that life because you're bringing Christ to every place you go? That rips me apart. Because I start saying, where do I go? I would say that none of you are involved in the extremes of anything wrong. Most likely, I hope not. But where do you go? Where do you take your body? Be careful with the eyes, what you see. Be careful with your ears, what you hear. What do you bring Christ into? If you really believe He was with you, and until you belonged to Him and He was there with you, would you do this? Would I do this? Carnality says, what's the big deal? God asks, don't you know your position in Christ in verse number 15? Your bodies are the members of Christ. Don't you know your projection of Christ? How, how do you project Christ to the world? Because you're supposed to be a testimony. And how do you project Him to the world? He says, 
Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined in harlot is one body? When the world sees you or finds out that you're living that fornication lifestyle, is what he's trying to tell them, or whatever you're doing with your body, and they find out, how are you projecting Christ to them? Can he give you victory over self? Can he give you victory over sin? What? Your position in Christ. Your projection of Christ. Let me just ask you. Do you want them to see Christ in a way that would look like he has no power? In your life. Is that what you want them to say? That Jesus just saves sinners so they can continue in sin? And just get away with it? Is that what you think heaven's about? Do you think that vile people will go to heaven? Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? How do you project Christ? How do I project Christ in what I say? How do I project Christ in what I see? How do I project Christ? How do I project Christ? Do you know? Don't you know? No, you not. Your position in Christ. Don't you know? Your projection of Christ. And don't you know your power through Christ? He's asking the same question. Know ye not again. Verse number 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost came upon him, what happened? What happened? They had power. Ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost is upon, comes upon you. Is that not what he says? When the Holy Ghost is in you and living inside of you and working in you, there is power. Do you know your position in Christ that you're part of the body? Do you know your projection of Christ to the world when they find out society, when they find out what you look at, where you go? What you say, what you see, what you say, and where you stand. Matter of fact, over there in the book of Psalm, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of God, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scorn. Where are you standing? Where are you sitting? Is your delight in the law of the Lord? Are you projecting Christ as one of the lights in the living for God? Or are you projecting Christ as one as the uh, blessed man that walks not in the castle of the ungodly, that walks in the castle of the ungodly, that stands in the way of sinners, that sits in the seat of the scorn? How are you projecting? How am I projecting? These says, don't you know your power you have? The Holy Spirit was given us not just so that we could say that we have the earnest of the Spirit. But so that we can have power over self. Power over sin. We have an old nature. But we have a divine nature. That most of the time we start, people say, well I'm saved. And they start talking about going to heaven. But they're not saved from sin. And he should, he should, oh, he should deliver his people from their sin. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. He's the Savior. He did not just save you from hell and save you to heaven, but he saves you from self. The power of sin. One day from the presence of sin. And he saved it from the penalty of sin. So we find the inquiry. We fire him impugning their logic, inquiring about their life, impugning their logic. 
But then, He entreats them to live. Verse number 17, no, no, excuse me, 18, flee fornication. Verse number 20, for you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit to God. He entreats them. Entreat. I would not have used that, was not going to use that word, but I was looking for a word. But today in Ruth, I found out that they spelled it with an I. Mm -hmm. And I said, glory to God. They spell it with an I. I can change this word to entreat. It makes more sense. Because he's pleading with them, begging with them. Mm -hmm. Two things. One is to flee sin. And the other said is to fellowship with him. Flee fornication, he said. If you know these things, live these things. I'm entreating you. I'm pleading with you. Flee this. If you have, if you're not one of the unrighteous, and the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. That means you have His presence. That means you have His power. Therefore, glorify God. Fellowship with Him. Live with, for Him. He's begging. The apostle saying, listen, I know you're carnal. But don't you think it's time to grow up? That's who he's writing to. That's how he's writing this thing. Let me say, I don't know where you're at in your walk with God. But all of us can grow a little more. If we just get our mind focused on the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But you're saying you're, let me say your first your walk, you're sanitized. Number two, you're sanctified or set apart. And number three, you have a standing. You have a home prepared where the saints abide. Yes, that's future. You have his, you have a place. You have his presence. And you have his power. Don't you know that? Don't you know that? Glorify God in your body, in your spirit. If you're not His, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Somebody said, well, that's all about position. How do you know whether you're righteous or unrighteous? It's by your practice. And he said, listen, your practice is not living like you're living in the right position. You're calm. You're making excuses for your attitudes. And you're making excuses for giving into your appetite. But we have the power of God. We have the presence of God. If you don't, if you say, I cannot get victory over sin in my life, then I will tell you today, Must be born again. He said, Oh no, it's an addiction. God can give you power over your addiction. Whatever it is, the only good addiction that God ever tells us about is addicted to the ministry of science. Say, I'm addicted to faith. And then it meets for the belly, and the belly for me. I'm addicted to fornication. Isn't it? I mean, it's just my body. It's just the body. God saves the spirit. The body's not the one that glorifies God. You see how carnality justifies himself? And God says, what? No, your body is not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Amen. 
Now let me say this. On the other side, there are those who say I'm going to glorify God in my body. But they do it all for sake. And they bring their body into bondage. And they do not even allow there to be any liberty. It's all rules and regulations. And they're going to enjoy the Lord. That's the other side of this. That's not the Corinthians problem. That's the Galatians problem. The gap. Everything is cut and dry. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. He can guide you into all truth. He'll lead you in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. It's not about rules and regulations, even though rules and regulations are good. The law is a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. But it's not about rules and regulations. It's about what? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. He can guide you. He can grow you. His power, His presence. He can give you victory. Let me say this. He can give you joy. This is one of the fruit of the Spirit. I'm just trying to tell you, your body is temple. Therefore, glorify God. This thing convicts me so much. I have to say, dear God, what do I say? What do I see? What do I allow? You don't ever do that. Right? You don't. I'd ask God, I'd ask you to examine yourself so you'd be in the faith. Because we can live victoriously over Satan. And I am not preaching sinless perfection. But it ought to be a sinless unto perfection. Father, I thank you.